This time calculate weight in adding rain rain for concrete quick. Uh, it, it will have uh, six meters span. We're gonna use uh, the concrete C35. Uh, the steel we're gonna use the S500. Um, let's start uh, calculating first uh, the loads that uh, we're gonna need for this. Let's imagine here. Let's imagine this lab with this bin here, another one in the middle, another. Let's calculate in the middle so we take uh, loads from both sides. In this side we're gonna have 6 meters. For example, here another 6 meters. The length of the beams still are 6 meters. Okay. Looking in a cut. Let's consider a stripe of 1 meter on the beam. So it will be like this. You'll have this slab. Let's consider this height 0.261 for the slab, reinforced concrete slab. We have this beam here on the middle and here. Since we are using 6 meter span here, 6 meter span here, we have here. 6, 6. Uh, we're gonna consider for variable load 5 kilonewtons per square meter over this line. Variable load. For finished walls, it's like partition walls. Let's consider, for example, we have a all of brick walls with plastering, so it's plaster already one side and the other one. Let's go to the a wall with 26 the tops, <coughs> the weight and the height 3 meters. Let's consider 3 meters, give 7.8. Let's use 8. 8. Uh, worst case, case scenario, let's put 8 for permanent load, dead load of this slab on top of the beam and uh, it's simply supported ok let's go here so for dead load of the slab it will be basically half of the span of this side so is this area that we have to consider so it's 6 divided by 2 gives 3 meters to consider. In this side, it's going to be this one, 6 divided by 2 gives 2 meters. So we can get to the dead load of the slab. So it's basically this plus this one multiplied by the thickness of the slab, 0.26. Multiplied by the density of reinforced concrete 25 will give us 39.15 kilonewtons per meter for the load of this slab. Now we have two to get the variable load for the beam. This variable load will be simply five multiplied by half of this pen and half of this pen because is loading all on the middle so it's basically 3 plus 3 multiplied by 5 kilometers per square meters what gives 30 kilometers per meter so now we have the dead load of the slab dead load here of the, fi the finishing we are considering some kind of wall at 3 meters Variable load, we transport all this to the beam that we are going to calculate and is doubly reinforced. <coughs> so we transport here 8, 
finish and other dead loads it was uh, this tube for permanent loads 39.15 plus 48 will give us 87.15 87.15 ok and the variable was 30 that we calculate this self weight I'm going to show how we get it is from the section that we will adopt so this pen has 6 meters starting by using a table from the euro code where this bin is simply supported so simply supported bin or slab and it's uh, been so it's high stress is not lightly stressed the concrete so to be divided by yeah, divided by D so it's 14 we're gonna use this so we know it's 6 divided by 14 will give us 0 0.43 meters instead of going adopting a lot of this I go directly to the 520 it will give us this double, uh, double reinforced slab so we go from 0 0.4 we could go to 0 0.45 uh, all the calculations I'm going to use the, here on the dimensions millimeters and just here on the forces and loads that I'm going to use kilometers per meter so it will be faster than having to think to change uh, convert uh, units so 520 um, the concrete was uh, C35 FCK 35 FCD it's divided by a safety factor of concrete 1.5 gives 23. The steel has 500 FYK newtons per square millimeter. FYD it's divided by a safety factor of 1.15. 500 divided by 1.50 434. Okay, the B is usually half of D. So. 520 that uh, we start to use, 520 divided by 2, could be 260, so I adopted 300 millimeters for the base here. And aggregate, let's use at least 25, one with the 25 millimeters uh, clean cover, 30 millimeters for links, stirrups, 12 millimeters. For the main rebars, 32 millimeters, and um, so for if it, it becomes a doubly reinforced concrete on top, it will be like the clean cover 30 plus 12 plus. Uh, Later on, I say I will tell why I use 25 divided by 2 for D because it's gonna be that value, so we don't need to be trying. Um, <coughs> the D is the H will be basically the clean cover 30 plus the distance diameter of the link 12 plus. Um, the 32 divided by 2 for and plus the D 520 would give us 578 millimeters of total depth. It's the higher this cross section of the B. Okay, so since we have uh, the B and we have uh, the D and the H. We can get the self weight, that is basically the total depth, 578, multiplied by the divide, 300, multiplied by 25, density of the concrete, 
Of course, this is in newtons. We pass for kilonewtons per meter, so that's why I use the this. Okay, so it gives us uh, 434 kilonewtons. And we know these two are permanent loads, and this one is the variable load. So we start by doing two things. We have to do the uh, calculate the bending, check the bending, and check the shears for this uh, reinforced concrete beam. Uh, start by factoring the loads 135 uh, multiplied by the permanent load plus 1.5 multiplied by the variable load. Doing this, we get 168.5 kilometers per meter. Okay. The moment in this simply supported beam will be an ED equal to the factoring load 168.5 uh, wood in the limit state multiplied by the span or elevated by 2 over 8 what give us the span was 6 meters 758 kilometers per meter so <coughs> for the main reinforcement we start by calculating the K that is given by this equation the factor moment divided by B multiplied by D, elevated by 2, multiplied by F, C, K. Okay. When we do this, it's 758.25 divided by B, that is 300, multiplied by D, that uh, we are using 520, um, Elevated by 2, multiplied by FCK, that is 35. Okay, all this gives us a K of 0 0.267. And six, since this one is bigger than 0 0.167, that is, I call it the K limit. It's a doubly reinforced uh, section, this beam. So it will be doubly reinforced on the bottom and on the top. For that, we have to start calculating so in a different way from the single reinforced beams. On the top of the beam, <coughs> we'll have to use this equation. And on the bottom, on the traction, on the tension zone, we will use this one. So, <coughs> first one, we start calculating. So, in the middle span on the um, top, and it's given by K less K limit multiplied by FCK, multiplied by B, multiplied by D, divided by 2, <coughs> over 0 0.87 FYK multiplied by D less D prime. This D prime is this one on the top. So we know we're gonna have this D prime because it's doubly reinforced. And uh, I'm adopting here. So the clean cover plus the diameter of the steel plus I think I'm going to use uh, on the top 25 a diameter of 25 divided by 2 for the reinforcement. Give us the prime 54.5 millimeters. Okay. 
Um, so we do the 0 0.267 less 0 0.167. And this will give us on the top the steel prime. Let's call it steel prime. Um, 0 0.10. Yeah. For this k. So on this equation it will be 0 0.10 multiplied by fck. That is. Uh, 35 multiplied by b it is a 3 run 300 multiplied by d elevated by 2 it is 520 divide over 0 0.87 fyk it is the steel of s500 multiplied by 500 multiplied by now here d that is the 520 less the d prime 54.5 all this equation will give us this steel on the top 1402 square millimeters here i'm using square millimeters okay so Let's see uh, what rebars we could use here on top. I put 3 of 25 that give us 1472, that is okay. Couldn't be less because it's, it's less than what is needed. So Okay, so it will be three bars of 25 millimeters diameter on the top. <laughs> here, this steel. And we could say it's here on the section on the middle, on the top of the beam. Okay, so now on the bottom, the calculation is basically uh, the limit to be the steel of, that uh, we are limited by k limit multiplied by fck multiplied by b multiplied by the total effective depth divided by 2 over 0 0.87 fyk multiplied by the lever arm limit and this lever arm limit here is different i'll, I'll tell you why plus the quantity of the area of steel that we put it on the top so this will allow to balance the beam create a, a balance of the beam okay so this lever arm z limit that i call it it's given by this equation z limit equal to this that will be equal approximately to 0 0.82 of D and this should be according to the Euclid, less than 0 0.95 D where it is so we can forget this part where it is 0 0.95 of D as a limit and concentrated only on 0 0.82 multiplied by the effective depth for the lever arm what will be 0 0.82 multiplied by 520 of d will give us this level on, on the bottom for the reinforcement 426.4 okay now we can get easily the equation for the, the area of reinforcement <coughs> on the bottom of the beam, middle span, given by this equation. K limits, it's the 0 0.167 multiplied by FCK, that is uh, 35, multiplied by B, that is 300, 
to pi by d, that is 520, divided by 0 0.87, multiplied by f, y, k, the steel is the 500, the 500 steel, yes, 500. Multiply it by the lever arm lead limit that is 426 millimeters. What gives us plus the steel that we calculated before that was 1402? This gives us a total 3958 square millimeters. For this, we're going to use five bars of with a parameter of 32. Here on the beginning, we were thinking to use 32 millimeters for the enemy bar. So we use this one 5 of 32 diameter gives us 4021. That is a little more than this. So we are okay. We can put other ones because they will not, uh, it's no good. It's less than what is required. 30. And uh, here we can't uh, put less, then it's not enough. So, five bars, five rebars with a diameter of 32 gives a steel area of uh, 4021 square millimeters. Okay, these five go here on the bottom, on the middle span, five bars of 32. Here on the top, three bars of 25 and we need to check the minimum steel by the equation of the Roku that's given by this one uh, this uh, <coughs> AS minimum will be the maximum between uh, 0 0.26 multiplied by FCTM multiplied by V multiplied by, by D the over FYK and that's FCTM can be, can be given by 0 0.3 multiplied by the concrete uh, 35 elevated by 2 over 3. Okay, what gives us 3.21 if we go even on the table? This is uh, 3.21 it will give us a close number C35 here FCTM will be 3.2 here on the table okay by the equation give us this so the it will be 0. Point, here the steel minimum will be 0. 0.26 multiplied by 3.21 multiplied by 300 multiplied by D 520 <coughs> divided by FYK the steel as 500 and the other one that is uh, 0 0.0013 multiplied by B, that's 300 multiplied by D, 520. And uh, what is the maximum between the two values? What did you want to use? 216 square millimeters. For that, we can use three bars of uh, diameter of 12, 339. It's okay. If we put 10, it's no good, so of 12 it's basically 3 multiplied by the area of 12. 12, 113.09 square millimeters. That's how we get this value here. It's 3 multiplied by 130.09. 339.27. Okay. So we have this minimum calculated, and uh, we have to have the, the main reinforcement between these values. So the steel maximum will be 0 
divided by the section area of the section of the concrete and <coughs> that's basically 0 0.04 divided by 300 divided by the height of the concrete that is uh, 578 578 what is 6900 okay for the limit maximum that we could use for steel 6900 okay it's here <coughs> so we just need to check here it gives us 1400 is more than this here it gives us 4021 I mean is more than this we are okay okay now we can calculate we know here on the supports on the bottom we only need to use 50% of what we calculated here here on this part so we only need to bring it to the supports on the bottom reinforcement half of this uh, could you see here for example it will go this will be the total the five here uh, from here to here approximately and we could put 50 percent approximate is less Sometimes it's 40%, almost 30%, 40, but putting 15% from here, from 0 0.15 distance from there, on this pen, it will be approved to be 15% uh, of the main reinforcement on the bottom. Okay. For the supports, okay. So, and um, on the top. Now, from we have on the bottom this we have, we know approximately the distance and the quantity. Now, from the uh, top on the supports, how much still we need there? We need that we have this equation from the euro code. We can check and it will be the maximum value between this the minimum steel area of steel that we calculated was 260 and 50% of the reinforcement on the bottom on tension. 50% uh, of them it's uh, 0.50 multiply by in the bottom was 3900 something will gives 593 square millimeters okay it's here so this one 15% is bigger than this one this is why we use the, this one for super so it means we need to use this quantity of steel here on the top on the supports one side and in the other side and uh, we can use 2 of 25 uh, I'm going to use this 2 of 25 they give uh, 981 square millimeters why? we could use less we could put um, 20 it still be ok but since the rebars here on top are 3 that we calculate of, with the diameter of 25 we could just extend two bars, continue to extend two bars here and in the other side two bars here of the 25 instead of the 20 because uh, if we have to connect this side with this side maybe we're gonna spend more, more steel maybe not so but maybe we'll spend more steel to attach this bar here to a different bar here so we can just continue this and that's what you see on the field you see the same rebar going from one, one side to the other one, other one. 
is not necessary you could change it but what you will see more 98 percent of times is this being all extended to one corner to the other corner of the beam okay that's why i'm putting two of 25 i could use the 20 and then i spend just a little extra here to attach it but since i want to give this clean okay so we have now all longitudinal steel on the bottom that is 5 diameter of 32 let me put it here uh, this one will be a 5 diameter of 32 Let me just put there. Here on the for longitudinal steel. On the half span five. Diameter of 32 on the bottom. Okay, so in the other corner, 50% uh, about this length. It could be 0 0.15 of L of span or L over 6. Could be a little less. Okay, but I, I'm going to maintain uh, always this. Uh, taught on this so here I put 100% uh, and here 50% so it doesn't need to go to more details than this uh, to scalonate uh, the steel so and here 50% of uh, 5 of 32 on the other part okay so on the top three diameter of 25 on the section of mid span here so three it is the area that is in compression on the top three diameter of 25 Okay, on the section of the middle, so, so it will be between this and uh, here to the corners is that equation supports on the top 2 of 25 on the span of L over 3 approximately. So, uh, here. So I will stand two of twenty five. On one side on the support and on the other. So two diameter of twenty five. To rebars of 25 on longitudinal rebars. Okay, we have all longitudinal rebars on this beam. Now we can start to uh, check the shear. For the shear, it will be this equation simply supported beam. It's going to be the factor load multiplied by span divided by 2. And this factor load was given here as 168.5 divided by the span that is 6 meters divided by 2 it was 505 kilonewtons ok now we are checking this to know if we need the, we, we have uh, done the longitudinal section reinforcement of the double reinforcement beam 
Now we are checking for the links and stirrups. And this is the value for shear. So we have in the euro code this equation to check here. The shear has to be less or equal to VRD C and uh, this has to be bigger than the V the shear minimum of the concrete. So the VRC RD the VRD will be CRD 0.18 over safety factor of concrete 1.5 multiplied by K K it's 1 or root uh, of uh, 200 divided by D on millimeters that is 520 will give us 1.62 and since it's complied with this euro code condition has to be less or equal to 2 we use this k ok on the equation we still have a row to get a row here it is equal to the still on the support the reinforcement on the support divided by b multiplied by d less than 0 0.02 has to be this condition and this one will be on super 50 percent as i told so we're gonna consider 50 percent of this here on the support This value, <coughs> okay. So the row will be four thousand twenty one that we are using divided by two, so it's fifteen percent. Divided by B, that is 300, multiplied by D, that is uh, 520 millimeters. What gives us 0 0.012? Okay, it's less than 0 0.02. So we, we replace everything and we get VRD, that is equal 107.97. On this equation and for the minimum shear here of the concrete replace everything the 0 0.035 multiplied by k that is 1.62 over 3 by 2 and by fck that is 35 elevated by 0 0.5 we don't have uh, axial force, so K1 was uh, 0 0.15, but uh, we don't have per stress, so it's 0 there. Multiplied by B, that's 300. Multiplied by D, that is um, 520 millimeters. 520. What give us the minimum of 66 and according to this equation of the euro code it has to be the maximum between these two this one and this one and between 106661 it's 107 that we have to use 107 for VRDC and our shear that we calculated, factor shear is 505. So this says that we, since VS is bigger than VRD, we'll need to have uh, links. Stirrups. Okay, knowing this, we're gonna calculate the VED mean. It is given by this equation. That is the the factor shear less the wide of the super divided by 2 plus d 
to pi by the factorial of this comes from considering this uh, cracking on the beam and this distance of d we adopt this distance of d for v e d mean <laughs> here we can see in support it to be in face of super mean maximum okay so this is why it's half of the support plus d so going back here the v ev minimum it's the 505.5 that we calculated from the shear here at the ultima limit state less b the of super that we are considering 300 millimeters divided by 2 plus d that is 520 and this will give us this value for that position that is 392 kilonewtons this is my minimum shear to use and there is another equation that is given by this so we know how much the concrete can take and this v shear minimum will be 0 0.50 to pi by b into pi by d root of fck so it's 0 0.50 to pi by 300 multiplied by 520 root of fck that is 35 is to give us in kilonewtons give us 138 this means that uh, between this and this we will not need to use the minimum for all the beam so we can adopt the 392 we can start calculate so that value for the face of the support is given for this equal from this equation is the same similar to the other one but here we just don't put the d distance of effective depth so it's a uh, ved less uh, b of super divided by 2 divided by factor low that is uh, 505.5 less the 300 the y of super divided by 2 divided by the factor low that is uh, 168.5 that give us 480 at face of the support for VED max maximum here we have this one we have this one okay we can know from this equation even the angle So, it, uh, if we take uh, this value, 6 point, we replace everything here. This is to calculate on degrees, it was 20.9. And since we, we have uh, a limit for theta, and cut of theta that is given by this, Bore. So, cut of theta should be between 2.5 and 1. Here on the top is theta 45 degrees, on the bottom 22.5. The crack should happen there. So, the minimum leaks will be on the bottom. Okay. Since you give us 20.98, uh, what happens? It means if we have the cut of theta we give us 2.6 uh, it's too much so we have to adopt 2.5 we're gonna limit to 22 degrees limit this uh, theta to 22 degrees 
we, get, we can get the spacing of the stirrups that we are using. But since this is a doubly reinforced concrete, we have to make a change that after now we're going to use this level arm. It is 0 0.9 of the effective depth D. So it's 0 0.9 multiplied by 520, that is the D. Give us 468 mm for level arm. Okay, so <coughs> this lever arm will be our limit now. We start by calculating, for example, the VRD maximum given by this equation. Where cot of theta we know we are adopting 22 degrees. So, and uh, we know they are equal to this ratio the V 0 0.6 multiplied by 1 less FCK that is 35 divided by 250 gives us 0 0.516 and the FCD to use on this equation will be equal to 0 0.85 multiplied by FCK divided by safety factor of concrete 1.5 Will give us 1983 megapascal. We take everything and we replace it here on the VRD, and we know it's B300 lever arm we are using. It's the the new one that we calculated. Uh, 0 0.9. Um, multiply by the 468 this one the V will be 0 0.51 we'll replace it there the FCD will be 19.83 divided by cot of 22 and tangent of 22 this in rad would give us 499.06 kilonewtons ok now we know this one and uh, we know the VED minimum. The VED minimum is given between is 392. So it's okay since VED minimum is smaller than the VRD the strength of concrete will be sufficient with uh, the stirrups of uh, 12 that we adopt we adopt the stirrups here of 12 okay okay so the VED minimum is given by this equation. If we, we take the spacing, spacing will be basically the <coughs> uh, the area of the section of the stirrups that we are using the ASW. It's uh, of 12 113 multiplied by 2 is uh, to be multiplied by 2 because uh, it's two legs in the stirrups um, multiplied by FYD that is uh, here on the top FYD 434.78 multiply um, by Z this lever arm that is the 468 
multiply by cot of theta that is 2.5 and this gives us 293 millimeters of spacing since uh, we have uh, this uh, limit uh, on the euro code uh, that is to keep it between 0.75 of the effective depth d and 600 293 so 0.75 of d it's uh, 319 millimeters spacing and uh, from this equation we got 293 so we can use this one 293 and uh, what we're gonna adopt in so far spacing since is this and I like to use the other roof that I have for myself to keep this between 100 and 300 millimeters so it's everything okay for me and um, so I'm gonna adopt two legs of diameter of 12 spaced by 25 25 centimeters and it's fine so it's the strips that we adopt two legs the spaced by 25 it's okay so in the, we have so here for clo <coughs> close to the support two Legs of 12, spaced by 25, and here the same in the other side. Now we're gonna calculate what is the minimum on the middle because it will be more spaced. And for that we have this equation. The v minimum is equal to this, so we have to adopt here the maximum spacing to put it here and that uh, will be this equation because uh, the minimum ratio rho minimum is given by this just get this equation and then this will give us so it's uh, two legs of diameter of 12 so the area will be 130.092 multiplied by 130.09 um, divided by 0 0.08 multiplied by b that is 300 multiplied by root of uh, fck that is 35 over fyk that is 500 or give us 796 and that that local rule to keep it here 0, 70, between 0, 0.75 and 600 so and but we have to use the maximum spacing the maximum spacing here on the minimum will be this 0, 0.75 multiplied by d use 319 so here we will use uh, spacing of 319 I like to keep that rule to keep things between 100 and 300 so this just means uh, for for the middle we could use, adopt uh, other smaller diameter for the steel but, but now keeping the same diameter uh, we'll get uh, and using this uh, for 300 so it will be that two legs of diameter of 12 spaced by 30 centimeters in the middle and we have everything what we could do here it was just to reduce the diameter here of the link on the middle and uh, <coughs> the relation then the ratio between the area of steel and spacing that we get here will reduce to be like 0 0.30 something and here 0 0.30 0 0.30 this is why it's giving these high numbers because we could use the stirrups uh, smaller so then it will be more stressed the links 
Okay, uh, going from where we stop it, we have checked this, everything is fine. We have the stirrups, we are going to adopt these ones. Um, to know this, the distance from here to here for these links, and here on the middle for these links, and the other side is the same than this one. We just make this relation. And here it's uh, we know it's uh, diameter of 12. Uh, the area is 113.09. So it's basically 2 multiplied by 113 <laughs> divided by the spacing of 250 millimeters. Give us this uh, ratio 0. Point, give us this in millimeters actually, not a ratio. It's more in the millimeters because here is square milli square millimeters on the bottom is millimeters. So 0 0.9. And the other side will be exactly the same. In the middle, what happens? Is the minimum steel we are using is just two two legs multiplied by 0 0.13 to 113 divided by the spacing that is we are using 30 centimeters 300 us 0.754 okay so what happens here it's high so since we we saw here it could be very spaced the in the middle what, what we could do if we change it uh, what we adopt there like for diameter of if we will we, we see this number will go down if we put less 0 0.52 so it's getting more stressed 0 0.8 so we should stay like in 0 0.335 this is like the limit 0 0.3 so from one side could be 0 0.3 here to the other 0 0.3 here 0 0.3 more or less around this value the links will be very stressed but instead of doing this we should do that we're just going to maintain the links of 12 for the calculation 12 okay this relation go back to what it was. So now we can take this x1 and the x2. That is basically using we know the v e d mean that we calculated distance of d. It's there. Came from there. And uh, we need the VRD mean that is basically given by this equation. And this is given by the, the links on the middle, the ratio that we got in millimeters 0 0.754 by the FYD that is on top 434 multiplied by z that uh, we calculated there is uh, this arm 0 0.9 multiplied by effective death 468 millimeters multiply by quarter of theta that is 2.5 okay and this gives us the VRD mean 383 okay that's that looks like rational here is 392 here is 383 so we know in the face of the support VD max is 480 We calculate it here on the top 480 piece of the support. The VRD mean 
this one 383 if we use this equation and we take x1 this distance this distance is basically the 480 less 383 divided by the factor load that is uh, 168.5 give us 0 0.57 meters okay and x2 is basically the span that is the we could consider the span uh, 6 meters Um, no, it's basically. Uh, we, we could consider six meters. There's no problem. Less the B of support less two times x one will give us around four point fifty five meters. Okay, so. We see that this x1 will have this distance on the other side, same, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this is all really related with the links that we are using with the diameter. For example, if I change here in the middle, that we didn't need it so much because it was given this spacing. If I put it for this diameter of 12, you have put it the, the 8 on the middle. We'll see that the distance, for example, here, that was only 0.57 with the length of 12. If we put it here, 8 millimeters in the middle, this will increase. So for, let's go here in the middle and put it at 8. Space it by 13. What happened? It increased. It goes to 1.83 meters x1, and here in the center reduces to two meters on. And before with 12, it could be like four meters. So we could use this to spend less steel. And now just for this calculation purpose let's maintain that all the same students here it was 12 so it will go back to 0 0.574 meters one side and the other side 4.5 meters and uh, we have calculated everything it will be so here this distance x1 0 0.57 meters for these links and here they are diameter of 12 spaced by 25 that we adopt and in the middle here the same well, specify by 25 centimeters uh, at this distance x1 x1 and in the middle but we know we could use the diameter of 8 it's the diameter of 8 spaced by the maximum space that could I, I use like 30 cm it could be more but, but we are using the 12, 12 in this calculation, 12 specified 30. But we know we could uh, reduce this this one using different diameter. Okay. That's all. We have calculated this doubly reinforced beam according to the Eurocode.